my name is Marissa Roy and I am Al Canada's first beauty vlogger. Welcome to the very first video in the Hashtag Beauty Playlist series where the beauty editors will task me with a concept and beauty products to come up with a look for you every week. This week in the extremely impressive box of beauty products, I got a note from the beauty director, Vanessa Kraft, telling me that my concept this week was festival beauty. And for me, the original music festival is Woodstock. This was in the 60s and 70s, and it was a week-long celebration of music and art and culture and peace and love. Unfortunately, I don't think many of the hippies who attended Woodstock really wore any makeup, so I looked in that same era to the 1960s mod look. The really beautiful cut crease, winged liner, bold use of white eyeliner, and really spiky long eyelashes. I combined these two genres and brought everything into contemporary times by adding really bold colors that were inspired by electronic dance music. To see how I got this look, keep on watching. So I've already applied my base and my eyebrows. The first thing that I apply, that I will always apply before going out for a really long day in the sun, is sunscreen. Sunscreen with an SPF 30 is my go-to. Um, it's the first and most important defense between your fragile and delicate skin cells and the harsh, damaging sun rays. Next, I wanted to set all of this hard work with a powder, and so I used the Physician's Formula Super CC Plus powder that I was sent. This has pink, yellow, and green pigments in it, and CC stands for color correcting, which means that all of these different pigments help to balance and kind of counteract a certain pigmentation in your face that you don't necessarily like. So green counteracts redness, yellow helps to brighten the face, and then pink helps to counteract, just like my peach corrector had, that blue or purple sort of veiny look in your face. Another thing that's great about this powder is that it's got SPF 30, and while I don't recommend just using this powder as your sunscreen, I think it's great to use as um, a reapplication throughout the day. And it actually comes, if you fold the product up like that, you have a mirror and a tiny little brush that comes with it, and it's great for reapplication. Dermatologists recommend reapplying sunscreen every two to three hours, and for me, I'm not uh, trying to slather white sunscreen all over all the makeup that I'm going to be wearing, so a little bit of this powder is a really great compromise for me. So I'm just going to take a little bit with my powder brush and dab off the excess and then just kind of buff the powder into my t-zone area that's where i tend to get the most oily and then especially blending it into the under eyes to set that concealer you can see that this is instantly brightening it's really surprising for me especially for something from the drugstore it's a really great quality brightening powder and i like to use kind of circular buffing motions to really get that to blend into the skin. Okay, so I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer because we're going to leave the complexion for now and start with the eyes. I'm going to start with the Matte Kajal by The Body Shop white eyeliner and white eyeliner is super kind of sentimental to me now because it's what I used in my contest entry video so I had to start with it as soon as I saw it in the box. What's really nice about this eyeliner is that it's pretty creamy um, and that will add for a really smooth and even application. So I'm just going to ring around my eyes. Kind of accentuating this tear duct area. And then adding sort of a flick at the end there. Now I'm also going to take this into the socket here, and the way that you can find the socket is just kind of feeling around where your brow bone is, and then when you feel that slope where it dips, that's where your socket is. So I'm just going to take that, just like that. and then just use my finger to kind of blend in the crease there. Now I love how creamy this eyeliner is, but I'm just going to take a powder just to set it in place because I'm a little bit worried that it'll start to crease throughout the day. Now 
Next, I'm using the Yves Rocher Waterproof Eye Pencil. This is an aqua blue, which is a shimmering kind of light blue color. The great thing about a waterproof pencil is that it'll stay wherever you put it all day and it doesn't have much of a chance of transferring into your eye for me onto my contact lenses and giving me that sort of blurry look that's not great since at a festival you really want to be watching the show uh, with clear vision. Now if you're scared of color, this is one of the easiest and sort of subtle ways to put a little bit of color into your look. Next I'm taking this Kat Von D ink liner in Nietzsche and it's this periwinkle blue. It's so gorgeous. I love this color. It's probably one of my most favorite colors of all time, honestly. Um, and I'm just going to take this right below the wing here. Kat Von D is a tattoo artist by trade, so all of her products reflect tattoos and ink and are supposed to be all long wearing and long lasting. So this ink liner I thought would be really great for the outer edge of the eye, which for me, when I start to tear up, if it's kind of dusty in the air and, and festivals, this is where I get the most kind of tearing in my eyes. So I wanted the most long wearing tattoo liner to be right there. So I just kind of extended the lower water line and just followed the wing that I'd already set with the white liner. Now I'm going to put mascara on. This is the Benefit Their Real Mascara in Beyond Blue, which is a updated color for the summer. The Their Real Mascara is one of my most favorite mascaras. It's probably one of the first ones that I repurchased over and over again when I started getting into makeup, and that's because it's really um, long wearing. I would say it's almost water resistant, even though it doesn't claim to be. It also is very lengthening and separating, and it's a really great formula all in all. The brush is also just exceptional because it's really kind of spiky you can really get great separation with it and then you got this little spiky ball at the end which really helps to kind of tease those outer corner and inner corner eyelashes and give you the fullest most voluminous effect the lower lash line eyelashes tend to be a little bit more sparse or shorter and are therefore a little bit more finicky to deal with so I like to use that little spiky ball and really build them up down there so this mascara was a great choice for giving me those like really bold, spiky 1960s eyelashes. So this is the first point in which I think you can stop and just keep going on with the makeup look. So if you want to stop here, just kind of fast forward through. I'll leave the exact timestamp down below and you can just keep going through with the rest of the complexion. But for me, I'm going to add a little bit more color. I'm going to use the Chanel Ligne Graphique in number 60, which is Dream Blue. It's this kind of shimmery navy blue color. I'm going to use this because of the tiny little brush, which is great for getting a really precise line in kind of hard to reach places. And for me, it's the hardest of all places to reach and now that I've put on mascara, which is just at the lash line there. Next, I'm using another iconic benefit product from the Their Real Family. This is the Push Up Liner. This is um, another one of the color updates for summer in Beyond Purple. And what's interesting about this is that it just kind of looks like a liquid liner pen, but it's actually a gel. So you click up from the bottom and the gel comes out of this tip, which they call the Accuflex tip. And a gel is really fun. It's actually my most favorite liner formula to use. Um, it's long wearing and it's easier to work with, I find, than liquid liner. And this one is just so great. It kind of combines the precision of application of a liquid liner with the ease of use of a gel. And I like this slanted tip a lot for application. So what I'm going to do is just apply this in that sort of inner triangle here to just really accentuate the, um, the crease of the socket of the eye. I love this eye look just here, but because I was offered so many products, I just had to use them. You can't give me a bunch of products and then not expect me to use them. So I'm going to take the Maybelline Color Molten Eyeshadow. This is a really interesting textured eyeshadow and I'm so happy I was introduced to it by Elle Canada. What I really like about this eyeshadow is that if you press into it, it's not a powder. It actually leaves an indent and it's kind of like a creamy mousse and it reminds me a lot of the Maybelline Dream Bouncy Blushes. 
um, which I find to be very long wearing. So I'm going to take this shimmery silvery white with a really pointed tip eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to use it to highlight the inner corner of the eye. Then to enhance that cut crease look even more, I'm going to take a little bit of that taupe gray shade with a smudger brush and I'm just going to kind of blend all of the shades together in the socket there. I love that this adds sort of like a smoky dimension to an otherwise very graphic eye look. So here's the finished eye look. I absolutely love the cut crease and I think that even though I went out of my comfort zone and tried all these different colors and way more different shades than I would generally use in combination on my eyes, I used techniques, so winged liner and the various different kind of formulations that I'm very familiar with and that's what made me so comfortable kind of going out of the box. So I'm going to be using the Joe Fresh Color Adjust Blush that I was sent. This is a bright, cool toned, hot pink, and I'm going to be using it with the Joe Fresh uh, brush that I was sent, and I'm just going to tap off the excess, and then apply it just to my cheeks. Then I'm going to buff around the color to really blend it into my skin so it looks seamless. For me, no summer look is complete without bronzer, so I'm going to be using a little bit of a long wearing bronzer as well. Just using a super fluffy brush and just kind of swirling that along the perimeters of my face. One of the quintessential rules of makeup application is if you're really enhancing the eyes and really doing a bold look on the eyes, to really make everything else kind of toned down and subdued and vice versa for any other feature on your face. But for me, I think, well, it's festivals and festivals are all about kind of breaking rules in the subculture. So why not go for the lip color that I was sent? This is the Chanel Rouge Coco Shine in En Soumise. This is a really nice kind of sheer balmy texture and it's an orangey red, it's super bright. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of tap it on the lips just like that. So I get the hydration of the balm and add a tiny bit of color while keeping, you know, everything kind of in balance. And then with that kind of tapping technique, you can build it up to as sheer or as sort of bold as you like a coverage. Another great thing about a sheer lipstick is that you can reapply this throughout the day without a mirror. So you don't need to run anywhere, you don't need to be fishing around in your wallet or in your purse to try to find a mirror. It's just really, really simple and easy. And here's my finished look. This is my 1960s cut crease inspired modern festival beauty look with a little bit of inspiration from the bright flashy colors of EDM music. If you enjoyed this look, leave a thumbs up. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought as well as your most favorite festival beauty tip. You can also join the conversation by talking to us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by tagging at El Canada or at Marissa Roy and using the hashtag beauty playlist. So that's all for now. Just remember when you go to festivals that it's a marathon, not a sprint. Drink lots of water, wear sunscreen, and have a fabulous time. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.